Well, it's great to see you today. We've had a few changes if you live in Sydney in the last few weeks where the restrictions have been lifting. Hopefully you've been enjoying some of the new freedoms for those of you who are able to. I know that I've heard a few people have caught up with family, some people have gotten their hair done and a few other things. But obviously we know that we're a diverse community and we also pray for safety for those of you who are maybe not so out and about at the moment too. But uh, we will be giving more information in the time to come around the transition to the time of meeting back together. And we pray that you know God close today. If you've got any questions, feel free to contact us. We're not meeting face to face at the moment, but continuing online as we do a gradual process back together. Let me read to you from Psalm 63. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the riches of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I remember you, I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you, your right hand upholds me. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him when the mouths of liars will be silenced. May God give us understanding of his word today as we continue in worship together. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forever. Good news for the shame. There is good news for the world who walked away. There is good news for the doubter. The one religion failed. For the good Lord has come to seek and save. He's our
just so many wonderful examples in our songbook, aren't they, of us celebrating the amazing power of God. Uh, and one of the real hymns of the church is How Great Thou Art. And we're going to join together. We invite you to share with us wherever you are in joining uh, and singing this song together this morning. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we give you thanks because you are an awesome God. You are awesome in all things. Nothing can compare to you and we praise you, Lord. We praise you like the psalmist who says, because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We praise you, Lord, for your creation. Everything put in just the right place for the right time. And we praise you for that. But most of all, Lord, we come before you and we praise you for Jesus Christ. We praise you, Lord, because he come to show us the way to you. We praise you, Lord, because he paid the price for our sins on the cross so we didn't have to suffer. We praise you, Lord, because he continues to point all who would call on his name to your kingdom. We want, Lord, to be more like you. We want, Lord, to reflect you in this world. We want, Lord, to be the person that gathers people around them and brings them close to you so that they can know what we have found out too. 
So as we gather today, Lord, as we open your word, as we meditate on your thoughts for us at this time, we ask that you would be with us. You would lift us up, Lord, as we exalt you, as we praise your name. We, you would guide us, Lord, as we look into your word and teach us what we need to know from your word. We want, Lord, that you would challenge us, not to be the same as we go away from this time, but to go away better people for you in a world that so desperately needs you. So, Lord, come before us and into our presence wherever we gather today and be glorified, Lord, in all that we do in your name. And these things we ask of in the name of Jesus, who died for us all. Amen and Amen. More than one in six children in a wealthy country like Australia are living below the poverty line. The 2020 report, Poverty in Australia, revealed the staggering statistic that there are more than 3 million Australians or 13% of the population living below the poverty line. These numbers include 774,000 children aged 14 or under. But poverty is more than statistics. It's about real people like you and me living with family stress, anxiety and lack of security. It's about poor health outcomes and education outcomes for children and reduced opportunities in life. It's being anxious about where the next meal will come from or how you're going to pay the rent or mortgage. It can be easy to think about poverty as a huge problem that is too big to solve and so we feel helpless. But I want to encourage you to look to our God and join with the Salvos to live, love and fight to transform Australia with the love of Jesus. As Christians, we are called to care for the vulnerable and respond to the poverty of others with compassion and generosity to be like our God. Anti-Poverty Week 2021 will be held from Sunday the 17th to Saturday the 23rd of October. It's a time when we are reminded that poverty exists and together we can all do something about it. Our doorways and money care services work with our core every day to help alleviate financial stress and provide a caring community for people. When we work together, we can provide support for one another to prevent financial stress. So let's join together at our core and with our area leadership teams to hold an event for Anti-Poverty Week. Let's show the community that we are a safe place where people can find support, a community working for a more just world where everyone can flourish. Uh, well, hey, it's great to see you guys and I know who you are and you're part of our great team at Hurstville Salvos. So I just want to introduce Nerida, wave Nerida, Vicky and Kathy. And Hello. each of these beautiful women are our money care financial counsellors. And I know that it's been anti-poverty week this week, just passed but it's not just something that belongs to one week. We know that it's something that's important for us to remember and we can each make a difference. But you're working with people, particularly in that finance aspect, but people that are doing it tough in our community. Um, I just thought I'd ask you a question or two and thank you for saying yes, about what do you love about what you do? Um, and what's a challenge? You can pick either or both or just share something you think would be helpful for people who'd like to go first. Well, I'll, I'll start. Um, and thank you for having us to um, talk about something we all love doing. Um, uh, it's, some, it's a choice, a job I've chosen to do because I wanted to um, use my knowledge and skills to be able to help other people in, in trouble. So what, what I love about the job is that um, if I spend an hour or two with somebody, I can just see the relief, even if they're still in trouble with their money. But, you know, we, we present lots of options and we try and work. 
um, you can see that the, the shift uh, of the, the weight of the stress has, has, and they, has, has lifted. So they even say, oh, I feel, I feel better just after being in here, even, you know, we, even though we haven't addressed everything. Um, and we, we get to meet some fantastic people across the community, um, you know, people who are really vulnerable, um, people um, you know, who, who are families and working and mortgages. Um, and all sorts of um, areas of the community. So we're very lucky and we get to hear their stories. Sometimes they can be difficult to hear. Um, but, you know, that's the challenge for me of the job is to see what best can I uh, use my knowledge to help this person make their um, financial life a little bit better. Thanks, Kathy. Love who you are and you do make a difference. What about you? I'll, I'll go with Vicky next, just in case you've got to leave. Go for it. Okay, so thanks, Kate. I think Kathy actually covered everything that I think uh, we would want to want to say on this topic. Really, it, to me, it's it's just making a difference to someone's life and being able to help them in a way that I can actually help them. Um, I I'm not a specialist in everything, but I do feel that if I can help someone, I'd like to be able to help them. And I think through the Money Care Financial Counseling Service that we provide, um, there are some ways I can help them and I'm able to do that and I'm able to make a, a positive difference to their lives. So thank you. Thank you. And look, Vicky, um, I bought you something while we've been in lockdown, but I haven't given it to you. But usually I picture Vicky with a light bulb above her head. She has lots of great ideas and she's passionate <laughs> about our community and our salvos. And um, we love that you brought that to the team as well. And what about Thank you, Nerida? Well, I'm in the business of turning frowns upside down, just uh, as uh, my fellow financial counsellors are, including um, the Hurstville Corps overall. Um, yes, it is um, like Kathy had told us and discussed and talked about, including Vicky. It is about um, leaving people, hopefully, with the positive change in their hearts and their minds, and also, you know, on a financial level. Um, as I said um, previously, we may not be able to help with everything, but holistically, we've got the support of the Hurstville Corps, um, the wonderful officers there, including doorways caseworkers, um, to support any vulnerable uh, members out there in the community with further needs that they may have. I can give you an example, if you like, uh, a case study example of positive change. Yep, you're happy to give it to us in a happy to, second yep. snapshot. Go for it. Sure. So I had a lady who's a pensioner coming in uh, and she was on the pension and her rent was 400 a week. So barely able to survive on essentials. Uh, so what we were able to do for this pensioner was, uh, and she was on the aged pension, uh, was get support from her school core in the way of food hampers. We were able to guide her to Savos Connect, uh, a 1300 371288 number. After that, I engaged a doorways caseworker to assist her with housing and in any other way we could support her with. Um, and that includes ongoing support for vulnerable community members such as herself. So there's just a very brief example of positive change. Thanks. Thank you so much. And um, as I said, we really value as part of our team and Zoe, who's a caseworker, who's not here today. But we just want to say that as Hurstville Salvo Church, we're praying for you. We're with you. And obviously really love what you do to bring change to our community, particularly in this anti-poverty week. We've just sat on a webinar that you guys have done for youth and young adults. Um, and that'll be going up online too. But uh, if you haven't met these lovely ladies, um, they're at our church office throughout the week. And in this time of lockdown, we've continued to meet online, um, but we'll be back together as much as possible. But on the phone at the moment, that's right, isn't it? You guys are doing yes. that great ministry work over the phone. So thank you for who you are, for the humor you bring, the community and the commitment and the passion to make a difference in this world. So God bless you. Thank you all. And, God bless you all. Um, thanks for, thanks for having soon. us.
Well, over the last few weeks, we've talked about some different topics, different subjects. I know that last week, uh, Majors Judith and Mark referred to some money from Russia, talked about the value and worth that it had, and he even held up a rock that had gold in it. And so was talking about that process of worth and value and how God can refine us when we look to him and purify us. And I know a few weeks ago, I also talked about something called Kintsugi and the art of repairing something that's been broken with gold, with the understanding that the object is more beautiful because it has been broken. And that art of Kintsugi, like that God repairs the brokenness in our lives and makes us more beautiful through this process when we're open to him, that he can fix us. Well, this week we've shared around Australia in something called Anti-Poverty Week. And I want to acknowledge some of the resources that I've seen and heard this week that have helped with this morning. It's a campaign that draws attention to the poverty that people are experiencing. And we know as the Salvation Army, uh, we want to see it prevented and eliminated. And this year, the theme has been, don't be afraid to speak up and out for financial freedom. Well, research shows that poverty has a direct impact on the economic, social and spiritual aspects of people's lives. The cycle of poverty and disadvantage once begun can be difficult to break and diminishes the individual and the society in which it occurs. The Salvation Army's experience with disadvantaged Australians demonstrates that without basic necessities being met like housing, a home, a place to call home, financial stability, etc. People survive, but they don't flourish as full participating members of society at times. That's what the study shows. Well, poverty exists. Poverty hurts us all. And yet we can all do something about it. I don't know what your story is. Maybe you've experienced some of what I'll talk about this morning. But it's one of hope and not despair. Well, there's different conversations that we have had to have in life. What are some of the hard conversations you've had to have? With your loved ones? With your work colleagues? with complete strangers? And what makes these conversations hard? Is it because we fear we won't be liked, people will disagree with us, or that our own beliefs will be challenged? I'm sure we can all think of something there. Well, as disciples of Jesus, there's a need to continually be challenged about the way we are in the world, the way we engage with others and with God, the way we have to a change of mindset is through conversations that we need to have. And these can often be hard, but they are critical. It's often said that you shouldn't talk about money, religion, or politics in polite conversation. I know some of you out there, that's probably a whole bunch of your favorite topics. Well, if that's the benchmark, I think we need to, when we read God's word, we see that Jesus broke the taboo almost every time he opened his mouth. After the love of God, that was one of his key topics, the right use of money and possessions was second on Jesus' list, followed by warnings and critiques of those in political and religious power. And Jesus often had these hard conversations with his disciples, his community and those in power. These issues were confronting, always confronting and difficult to deal with. And these topics and his teaching weren't always popular. He was often criticized for raising them, but he wasn't afraid to direct people on the path of the kingdom of God. And as Jesus followers, nor should we. We are in fact called to do this. It's not an optional extra to be left to someone else. It's for all of us. A conversation that we need to have today and this week we've highlighted is about poverty. Well, in the Bible, it's clear that those in poverty are close to God's heart. Jesus himself was born into poverty and gave up his heavenly riches when he came down to earth. 
and he constantly talked about the poor as being blessed and we're instructed to value integrity over riches. God hasn't forgotten the poor and instead he calls us as his believers to join in his restorative work to bring hope and opportunity to people's lives. Poverty isn't God's idea, yet we see it all around us. And as I said, some of you have experienced it. As God's people, we're called to do something about it. And we've seen a video from the DC, the divisional commander in Tasmania. And we've also seen a short interview with some of our key team members from our office team, from Money Care, as well as we've got our caseworker as well. But the prophet Micah, in his well-known words to the people of Israel, gives a good framework on how to tackle these big issues that could seem sometimes overwhelming. He says in Micah 6, 8, What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Or when we walk humbly, with our God. It requires us to shift our view of what is good and right to God's view of good and right. This requires for us to be challenged on our ideas of fairness and equity and shift them to God's preferred future. In the prophet Isaiah, he gives a glimpse of God's preferred future. For I am about to create a new heaven and a new earth no more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old person who does not live a life out a lifetime. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. That was in Isaiah 65. Imagine that, a society where everyone has housing, meaningful work and health care. I uh, was in Uganda just a few years ago and a young mum dropped her child off to the place that our friend has, the Mbuyu Foundation in the middle of the slums in Katanga. Dropped her little girl off with a fever. Now she knew she didn't have the money to take her to the hospital. And so we watched our friend that oversaw that centre Quickly take the little girl back to her mum, give some money in her hand to say, get on a bodawara, which was a motorbike, and take her to hospital, and here's some money to pay for the healthcare. It was a totally different system over there where they had to pay, they had to stand in a line for medication, they needed family to cook and do their washing and look after them while they were there. It was a different world to see that lack of access to healthcare. Well, imagine a world where everyone has access to all of these things, a society where poverty is a thing of the past. And that's a vision we're striving for and a vision we're called to partner with God in bringing about. We know that our founders, William and Catherine Booth and the Salvation Army, uh, that was their vision to see all people have access and be part of society, to be transformed with the love of Jesus. But walking humbly with our God replaces our vision of what society should be with a kingdom one and then using all that we are to see it happen. What are the conversations between ourselves and God that we need to have in order to walk humbly? Well, loving kindness doesn't mean having pity or feeling sorry for people and responding out of that pity or sorrow. Our vision statement in the Salvos calls us to work alongside others. There are so many amazing organisations and people, especially those we serve. We don't have all the answers. And so to be truly kind, we affirm a person's dignity and strength and gifts that they have. And we use our responses to partner with them, to show kindness, we need to have an appreciation for other situations. We need to have understanding of some of their world. And that means having conversations, gaining understanding and upholding the worth of those in our community. Everybody has worth. I think we know that in the Salvation Army, we're pretty good at allocating resources to help those who are vulnerable. 
You can have great fundraising campaigns like the Red Shield Appeal or the Christmas Appeal. Great programs run by our social mission or community engagement personnel. But I think the danger that we have is that we rely on these great things that the movement does in order to fulfill our personal responsibilities as disciples of Jesus. We might outsource our personal calling to others. The challenge for us personally is to give up our comfort and our personal space to engage with those who are vulnerable and experiencing poverty. Who is vulnerable in your world? We know that it's not always easy. It can put us out of our comfort zone. It could be challenging. Maybe it's someone in your own family, but it's what we're called to do. And when God's flourishing becomes a reality for those that we journey with, wow, what a transformation. And I could tell a lot of stories of that tra those transformed lives. And we want to tell more of those, don't we? Say amen to that. Well, another trap we can fall into is to support those who are vulnerable, maybe give them something, say something, but not actually engage or do life with them. And one of the conversations we need to have is how we are personally involved in dealing with the poverty that is around us. For some of us, we might have the capacity to provide financial resources and for prayer, but that's not most of us. Most of us have to choose to engage with vulnerable people. We have to have conversations with people who are experiencing this poverty. What are the conversations we need to have with those we walk alongside with? What are the conversations in our church communities to do this better? Well, to do justice, as Micah says, we saw some of our money care team earlier who work at Hurstville Salvos every day to help people with financial stress and provide a caring community for people. And we know that's so important. But a question for us who might be part of the church, how can we walk alongside them to provide a community of love and acceptance? Because we know that when we work together, we can provide support for one another to prevent this financial stress and other uh, stresses in life. How can we be intentional and build healthy communities for people in crisis or before people are in crisis? How can we have good conversations with one another to check on how we're going? Well, just a little thought for today. And there's some practical ways. And I'd encourage you, we've got in our newsletter some, some links for some of the webinars that were this week and quite a few of the team did youth and young adults and that's going to be available. All very practical things. But I think that we need to be able to pray for and be generous with others ourselves. We can support and raise awareness is something called Raise the Rate for Good. Look it up online if you can. And other campaigns that make a difference in society. Let's be advocates for ending poverty through our state and federal political representatives. Maybe we can do an act of kindness to a local business or someone that you know has been doing it tough in this COVID time. Let's talk to some of our team and ask them, how can we help? Let's share our own faith stories and our own stories with people. If we've been through it ourselves, maybe we can come alongside somebody else. And we can also access that support ourselves. And let's show our community and continue to that we're a safe place where people can seek support, a community working for a more just world and where everyone can flourish. We know that God cares about the poor. It's a lot, says a lot in the Bible. We can keep having these conversations that matter, conversations with God to change our mindset, to challenge our worldview to the ideals of his kingdom. Let God break our hearts for what breaks his. Let's have conversations with vulnerable people experiencing poverty that focus on the person, not the situation or the behavior. 
conversations which are full of kindness and love. Well, we also want to be people of action, not just words. So may God encourage and challenge each one of us today. We're going to pray, but there's a beautiful song that we're going to listen to after this. People need the Lord. It's an old one, but it's got beautiful words. But we thank you for joining us today and pray that you know God with you this week. Let's pray. Well, eternal God, giver of all good things, we thank you that you are a good God and that in this life we can experience good things. But we also acknowledge this morning that many people in our communities are vulnerable and are experiencing hardship and poverty. We pray for all of those with the Salvation Army and other organisations and churches who provide this support. And we pray that through our actions, that people will flourish as you intended. Pray that you'll help us to speak out for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are struggling. Help us to be your hands, your feet and your love in this world. And help us by your spirit to gain a vision for your kingdom. We ask for your grace and compassion that we'll have conversations with those in our community who need to experience your love and grace. Give us wisdom and courage to have conversations with our community, our leaders, to bring about structural and social change. And help us, like it says in Micah 6, 8, to love kindness, to do justice, and to walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. <laughs> I can see it in their eyes Empty people filled with care Headed who knows where On they go through private Open door 
God bless you each. Have a great week and we'll hopefully see you and speak to you soon.